I'm Jody Kaysen, editor of Punch Magazine and your host of Punch TV. Welcome to our first episode. So what exactly is it that you're watching? Well, Punch started out as a little fanzine and has grown into the show before you. Punch packs a punch in the superhero sense, and it also is a punch. It's a tall, cool, tasty drink of a hodgepodge of ingredients. A couple of years ago, I was thrilled to discover that Saskatoon is chock full of amazing talent. And we have some of the best of the comic industries right here in our backyard. Um, we have so very much to be proud of. So we are pleased to bring you the best of Saskatchewan talent. Artists, writers, other creative types who love comics, anime, pop culture, and much more. So come and celebrate with us all that is nerdy. To kick things off, here are a few moments from the happiest day of the year, Free Comic Book Day. Here's the lineup for Free Comic Book Day. Are there any free comic books today that you are hoping to get? Uh, I'm generally just a collector, so I'll get all of them. Um, I particularly liked last year's Features End, so I'm hoping there's another line that uh, starts up from this. You got a good arm load going there. What is this one about that I'm holding? Um, I think it's about dinosaurs and giant bugs attacking each other. Giant bugs and dinosaurs? That sounds awesome. Okay, what's your next book there? Um, giant wooden things holding spears chasing two people, one's dead and one's on fire. Okay, that sounds hot. What does Batgirl wear to bed? I don't know. Her Dark Knight gown. <laughs> ah! All right. Who would be your favorite superhero? Mm, the Flash. The Flash. Do you watch the TV show? Yeah. Do you watch uh, TV shows with superheroes too? Yeah. Who's your favorite superhero? Uh, the Flash too. You like The Flash as well? He's so fast. Tell us what superhero or character that you are dressed up as. I'm Deadpool. I'm Deathstroke. I'm the uh, Talon from the Court of Owls. My name is Ink. So is that a real tattoo? No. And did you put it on yourself? No, my dad did. Your dad is an excellent artist. Thumbs up to dad. What is Iron Man's favorite amusement park ride? Ding, 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 ding. He loves the Ferris wheel. Get it? It's sort of science-y, because Ferris is iron. <laughs> So obviously this is probably your favorite Pokemon character? No. No? Well then who is your favorite character? Charizard. Charizard. Powerful. This is a tremendous outfit. Is that difficult to do or can like pretty much anyone with a willing spirit and some DIY uh, endeavor, can they make this stuff? Anyone can make this stuff. You just have to have the patience for it. But if you do, then yeah, you can save yourself tons of money. These uh, pieces are all actually uh, kids' play foam. So they look good on the outside, on the inside, they're foam. Do you consider yourself to be a super girl? Yes. And John, what did you get today for comic books? Transformer. More than meets the eye. Who is your favorite Street Fighter character? Probably Ryu. And what makes him great? Because he has awesome specialty moves. Oh, yeah. I stole that guy's comic. I stole your comic. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Some drama. Woo. I thought more people would do chalk art, but they didn't. They just stepped on the chalk. <laughs> I am here with Tony Antonuk, who is my partner in crime and bringing you punch. What are your impressions of Free Comic Book Day today, Tony? So far it's been really busy. Lots of good comics going out the door. Lots of people very happy. Lots of cool costumes. Quite nice. It's, good. it's a good day. Awesome. It is the funnest day of the year when somebody comes and they get like a giant stack of stuff and it's like a ton that they would never have just picked off the shelf to buy. It might introduce them to something that is like mind-blowingly good. I agree. That is, there's nothing better than getting stuff that you were trying out for the first time. 
Okay. All right, well, thanks for talking to us today. Good. I better get back in line because all these people need to know where to go. Without right. me, they have no idea what's going on. So Your guidance will show them the way. Besides Captain America, who is your favorite superhero? Um, I like Captain America. <laughs> oh, here's Thor. <laughs> we found Thor! We thought it was a trick Loki was playing. Heroes like Captain America have a very strong anti-bullying message, which is always good. He's always protecting the little guy, the underdog. And when you introduce kids to superheroes, there's always a moral compass involved. So it's one way to get a moral message across, but not preaching at your kids. Uh, I'm so bad. I'll give the thumbs up. Who is your favorite superhero of all? Paul Hulk Smash. <laughs> Smash! Do you like Slimer? <laughs> what do you like about Slimer? He goes through the walls. Do you wish you could go through walls? Science. Science is the answer. Ghostbusters! Can you say it like that? Ghostbuster! Yeah! Three, two, one, one of them! Welcome back. Now is the time in our show for a little segment I like to call The Collector. I am here with Tony Antonek, who has an amazing collection. This is one of a few collections that you have. It's weird, eh? It's really weird. Well, welcome to the show. <laughs> um, so tell us about this particular collection. Well, when I was growing up, I had a bunch of Star Wars toys. I loved them and I played with them. And then, of course, everyone goes through the mom throws out everything you own thing. And my mom threw out all my toys. So I've been kind of collecting Star Wars toys. And I decided I was going to go back and buy more of the, you know, of the stuff that I grew up with. So pretty much everything on here are toys that I grew up with, not the actual toys, but this is the stuff that I've been collecting recently, so. So this is stuff from the 70s? This then. is all from the 70s, yeah. From, pretty much everything here is like from Empire Strikes Back and, and uh, Star Wars, the original one, so. I'm actually feeling a little bit giddy because yeah. I had some of these same toys as well and it, it's exciting to see them all again. Though, like, at the time, I'm sure that a child's imagination brings a lot to the table. Um, like the cardboard is kind of budget. <laughs> yeah. Like toys today are so slick and, and fine. And like, it's like, really? We thought that that was the bomb back yeah. then. So it's, is stuff like this, that's the cardboard, is it like highly coveted as a collector? Uh, you know, it's mostly the stuff that people want or stuff that's like box never been played with. Like a lot of the stuff, this stuff's well used, well played with. And because of that, it's not, doesn't have a lot of worth. This, you know, the stuff that actually is worth more is the stuff that's never been played with in the box, never been opened. And, hasn't been like, in a, you know, it's been in the storage room but most of its life. So that's the stuff people are looking for. I don't really buy that stuff. I like the stuff that I can actually still put on display and play with. So Yeah, that's yeah. where the fun is, right? Yeah, exactly. So, okay, approximately. Yes. How big is your Star Wars collection? Um, huge. This is just a small part of the older stuff, but I collect, uh, I buy a lot of the new stuff. So anything new that comes out, I don't buy things like, you know, like uh, dual tanks and stuff like that, but for toys and, and ships and stuff like that. Uh, I recently got into Lego, Star Wars, so that's been taking up a lot of my pocketbook. So. Um, where do you keep all of it? I actually am not allowed to say. Okay, <laughs> it's it very say? secret. Okay. Yes, it's very secret. secret. Um, my, my mom's basement, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she loves that. Yes. Um, so, okay, if somebody wanted to get into it, because, of course, the new movie is coming out in yeah. December. Really exciting. This is a big deal. Yeah. Um, so I think we're going to get a lot of more people coming on the Star Wars bandwagon again. So if a person wanted to start to collect Star Wars, yes, where is a good place to start? Depend, you know, decide what you want. I think the biggest thing about Star Wars now is with the new stuff coming out, there's going to be a lot of new stuff. There's going to be so much new stuff, I don't think people are going to be all in. I know people that are going to be all in and try to buy as much as they can, but for me, I'll probably just stick with the action figures and the ships. Um, and maybe the Lego, but there's going to be so much stuff coming out that it's going to be hard. So I think I would probably decide whether or not you would want to buy stuff from the new movie. That would be pretty exciting. Or if you want to go back and buy some of the old stuff from the retro stuff, you know, from the 70s or even the 90s and the newer stuff that's coming out. So cool. So as a collector, is it a good idea to like set some parameters yes. for what your collection set is going to be? some parameters. I made an error many years ago where I stopped thinking about what I wanted and I just bought everything, but now I have to, yeah, it's, it's too expensive to buy everything, so you have to set some parameters, so. So if you get stuff, and obviously some of it's gonna be rare and some of it's gonna accumulate yes. in value and, and be more valuable, um, insurance? So I don't really know much about insurance. My insurance is just like praying that no one wrecks my stuff. 
<laughs> That's, my okay. insurance is like, hey, don't, don't, touch, don't touch my stuff, please. Okay. Yes, That's exactly. Awesome. Um, well, that, that, that's okay. <laughs> I don't know anything about it. It's kind of one of those things where you'd think that I would with all the stuff I have, but yeah, no, I'm just, I just hope nothing happens. That's okay. How, how does a person know what stuff is worth? Like if you oh. were going to buy something from a, you know, a store or from a collectibles place or a, or a, some of these shows yeah. like at a convention or something, like how do you know if you're getting a good deal or you're not? Well, you don't. You can use eBay and go to like the, the, the actual stuff, the ended, the end, the, the, um, the web, uh, what do they call these things? Completed? <laughs> the completed auctions. Okay. You go to a completed auction that's actually sold. So not even so much completed, but something that's sold. Because you can go on eBay and there's like, someone might want $1,000 for this, but it's only worth like 20 bucks. So you can kind of get a range as to what things you're selling for, and that's kind of what it's worth. It's only worth, worth what people will pay for it, so... That's, you know, so that's the way to do it. There's books and stuff, but they're so outdated, like something that, that can come out, like something like this, I bought, I think I paid like $50 for it. Uh, and I bought it, it probably is worth less than that, but I wanted it, so I just bought it. You know, it's something that I wanted, so I bought it. But for the most part, if you want it, and you might not ever see it again, you just kind of buy it. Collecting is kind of like not about what it's gonna be worth, I don't think, it's more like, do I want it? What's, what am I gonna pay for that item, so. Yeah. Investment of the heart. Yeah, not without a doubt, pocketbook. yeah, not with the pocketbook. Okay. Yeah, I would say to people like, I would never bet on buying something that's gonna go up in value because then you'll just be you know, upset. Buy something you want and something that you're gonna love and have, you know, whether you wanna have it at the store because you want it or whether you wanna have it on display, but buy stuff that you love for right. sure. So, yeah. That is really good advice. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm really excited to see more of your collections yeah, this over is, the next yeah. few weeks. Um, yeah. This is, I know, a drop in the bucket. This is just more like showing people like some of the older stuff, but yeah, there's a lot of things that are really awesome as far as like the new Black series from, from Hasbro, the Lego stuff that's coming out with the new movie stuff. There's gonna be so much Star Wars stuff, but then also I'm gonna talk about things like just like the Avenger stuff and the just the Marvel stuff and the DC stuff that's coming out too. There's so much stuff collectible that that is coming out right now it's really exciting so awesome well yeah. it's something that we can all look forward to cool. so awesome. thank you for joining us You're today no and problem. uh please bring more fun stuff I know. for me I, to play yeah. with and i can show everybody how really ridiculous and weird it is yes <laughs> <laughs> Hello lovely ladies and or dudes. My name is Hank and I have got some sweet tweets for you. That's right, this month on The Tweet Beat, we are gonna be talking about large dinosaurs with tiny little arms and celebrity chefs that like cooking with a lassie. Jurassic World, bad auntie in perma heels neglects nephews in island theme park where the attractions eat the guests and each other. Hank scores it a 71 out of 100. Star by Brian Wood, issue one from Image Comics. Famous foodie father returns to hit celebrity chef show from self-imposed exile. Hashtag family feud. For more of the sweetest of the tweets, please follow me at Hank and Kelso and at Shaw Punch TV. And maybe you want to have your reviews shared on the air. That could be fun. You never know. So what you want to do is you want to tweet your review and include the hashtag PunchTV. That's right, PunchTV. And that's it for me. My name is Hank, and see you next month on The Tweet Beat. So the newest edition of Punch Magazine is on the rack, hot, hot off the press. And we had a really awesome time at the Roxy. We had a great party and Craig was our host. So uh, we captured a couple of moments that we'd like to share with you and then uh, we'll talk about it a little bit. Hi, this is Craig Sullivan, and I'm at the launch of Punch TV at the glorious Roxy Theatre. Tell me your name and tell me what you do. Uh, I'm Leah Keeler. Um, I do a lot of artwork, as you can see, uh, mostly digital in Photoshop and just draw it out and paint it out. So how long does uh, one of these pieces take you? Um, anywhere between a couple of weeks and a month, sometimes even longer than that. My name is Rebecca Riley and I do portraits. Where do you get your inspiration? Just pop culture, movies and TV shows I like. 
I'm Lexi Edmonds, and I make decoupage crafts. So how long uh, does one of these pieces take you, say the, uh, one of the iPhone uh, covers there? Well, each of these varies. An iPhone could take only an hour, whereas for this one, each separate strip, you have to wait 15 minutes of drying in between. And if you look, there's quite a lot of panels. So is most of this stuff uh, like watercolor? Or? Uh, some of it's digital, some of it, in fact, this one is marker, and then this one is watercolor. And so are you self-taught in terms of the digital stuff, or did you go to school for that? Or? Um, I'm self-taught for all the digital stuff, and then for acrylic, I actually have my BFA in studio art from the university. So can you quickly describe the, the process for the airbrushing? Um, usually it all starts off black and white, and then sometimes I go in with color afterwards, if I so choose, but I'm really enjoying just working on black and then adding the white on top of that. Horror is most certainly a genre that I love. Um, the Pirates of the Caribbean is my life, so I'm currently just making up a little bit of a series of Pirates of the Caribbean right now. Have you seen Wolf Cop before? No, I haven't actually. I'm really excited to see that tonight too, so. Nice. It's sort of what I look like uh, on a Saturday morning after a night out, like a drunken Wolf Cop. Which article did you write? Mine is A Child of the Bronze Age, and it's written about the Bronze Age of comics, which was during the 1970s. So you guys proud of Mum uh, getting published in Punch? Abs yes, absolutely. This is Zoe Wingate, who actually did the layout for uh, Punch Magazine, I think for the last couple of issues, right? Uh this one and the one prior to it, yeah. So what's, uh, what's the major consideration that you uh, have to take into account when you start looking at the layout for everything? Uh, time frame. <laughs> and did you have a favorite uh, piece or anything in the magazine? Favorite spread? I like this one. I thought this one was fun. Zoe's done a fantastic job. Uh, we took an old issue of Punch, I think it was issue two, and we had an in-class assignment where she had to remake the issue. And from there, I introduced her to Jody, and they've done a fantastic job ever since. I hear that uh, Jody is a real slave driver, I guess is the word I've heard used, uh, really hard to work with. Is that, can you confirm that? Who said that? <laughs> uh, me, I guess. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, she's all right. She's pretty good, yeah. <laughs> There is an article in Punch in defense of Dune. What do you think of the movie Dune? Uh, I love the movie Dune. I love the books. I think we both can agree on that. Uh, yeah, it's it's all I could do. You know, if we're talking about the what's that guy's name? David Lynch. Yeah, his Dune. I like that movie. I'm Lindsay McNabb, and I like to draw. <laughs> do you do the coloring yourself too? Um, yeah, I use. I like to use the Copic markers and, and some digital stuff, but everything that I've submitted has been digital. So what do you think about all the people coming out tonight uh, to support the local magazine and uh, watch a locally made movie? It's great. We've met lots of interesting people so far. Have you seen Wolf Cop? I have seen Wolf Cop. And what'd you think? Uh, I can't wait to see it again. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the launch of Punch 5. Thank you so much for coming out and supporting Punch. Give yourself a round of applause and enjoy Wolf Cop. That was an awesome party. I had a really good time. I think just about everybody did. What were your impressions, Craig? I thought it was great, actually. There was a great uh, turnout for it, uh, and lots of great artists there applying their wares, as you could see. Uh, lots of really creative stuff, and uh, you know, people just having fun. Uh, while I was uh, introducing the, the the films and stuff like that, I, I, I said something on stage about, you know, doing local events like that. Not only takes people doing stuff like you know making the magazine and stuff, but it takes the people coming out 
to the events like that to support their friends and local artists and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's always great when you get, uh, you know, a great local turnout like that. Yeah, it's a really awesome and fun way to build a community. Totally. And it's a great venue, too. I mean, the Roxy Theater is just beautiful to have something like that in. They were really, really good to us. So, yeah, it was the first time that we ever tried doing something on that scale, and it was fantastic. Everybody had a good time, so the more the merrier. So, speaking of films... You're well known as kind of being the movie geek. So what uh, should people be watching this summer? Well, I thought we should talk about the sort of top five or six uh, summer blockbuster movies. So, uh, you know, there's a distinction. These are popcorn movies, not art house fair. Uh, and not necessarily the movies that are the best or that I found the best, but just the ones that are going to be huge this summer, basically, okay, uh, from start to finish. So, uh, I mean, I think, well, one of the number one movies, uh, and, and it was a really good movie, actually, was Mad Max. I mean, the, the reboot of the George Miller post-apocalyptic series. Uh, great fun. Did you get a chance to see that one yet? I have not, but I've read the comic, and it is awesome. It's based on the movie, and it's, like, dynamic yeah it's a crazy like two hour insane uh, car chase there's not much story or anything but it's a crazy two hour car chase you kind of know what you're gonna get and you get it yeah exactly exactly uh, of course uh, Avengers Age of Ultron uh, was another huge one this summer uh, bringing back the uh, Marvel uh, film universe and and you know seeing what they do with this crew after you know the first movie and some of the events and some of the other films uh, Jurassic World is obviously a big one uh, huge uh Hank gave us a little tweet review of that one, and uh, everybody is buzzing like crazy about it. Well, there you go. Uh, there's one that's probably not on as many radars, so I wanted to throw something out. Uh, it's not a huge summer blockbuster, so I'm kind of breaking my own rules mm -hmm. a little bit, but it's my list. Yep. I'll do what I want. Punch. <laughs> Punch magazine. Uh, Punch TV. Uh, so there's a movie called It Follows that oh, is a horror movie that uh, it, it is making a splash this year, but it's mostly on the sort of indie scene and, and growing for horror fans and stuff like that. Uh, and it's just like a really well done uh, creepy horror movie, kind of in the vein of, you know, John Carpenter, suburban nightmare kind of stuff. Uh, definitely worth checking out if you, if you like a good horror movie. Uh, one of the ones I'm really looking uh, forward to seeing is Inside Out, the new uh, Pixar movie. That came out of nowhere. All of a sudden, it was like, Psh, there's toys and buzz, and it's everywhere, and people are talking about this yeah, movie. Yeah, it's going to be really good, and uh, there's actually a book you can get called Creativity, Inc., written by the guy that runs Pixar that sort of explains how they do creativity at Pixar and, and uses Inside Out as sort of a reference point. Uh, so that's five. If I gave you two like yeah, yeah, honorable yeah. mentions, I would say I'm not necessarily looking to this as much, uh, but... In the similar vein as uh, Inside Out is the Minions movie, which I know will be like a legion of children everywhere will be, you know, dragging their parents. Well, maybe maybe the parents like it too. They're cute. The Minions are cute. They're adorable. They're adorable. Uh, and the other one I'd mention probably is Ant-Man, another Marvel uh, film universe one. So, I mean, yeah. definitely a packed summer full of some really fun stuff that, that'll be uh, hopefully getting people out to the theater. Totally. So, yeah, if people are feeling a little overwhelmed by the heat, they can, like, take a little break, air-conditioned nice air theater, conditioned theater, have a yeah. little popcorn, <laughs> have a good time. Yeah, it, summer movies are great. You you can't expect the Oscar-winning performances. No, it's fun sometimes. They're popcorn yeah. Yeah, I mean, I like just... my Ingmar Bergman movies as much as the next uh, pretentious film guy, but, come on, a big summer explosion where you blow up New York City. How's that not fun? I want to see, like, fire and robots <laughs> and crashes and, like, you know, that kind of stuff. Exactly. It's very good. Well, there's lots on the plate. Um, and, you know, this was a movie edition. So right. there's some really good recommendations. There is an article in here about um, Mad Max. Um, but there's some also great favorites, like the article that you wrote about Dune. Yeah, not a movie I'd recommend to anyone, really. But, I mean, I guess the article is in defense of Dune. So it's <laughs> sort of talking about the problems that that movie had in production and, and after it came out. So don't I'm not going to recommend that movie to anybody, but... Yeah, I, I love it. I love it. I love Dune, but most people hate it. Yes, and I don't blame them. And that's okay. okay. That's different strokes for different folks, right? That's right. That's what makes the world go round, <laughs> baby. All right. Well, you should have a look at the uh, the movie issue and go see some summer blockbusters. Enjoy them with your friends and family and uh, stay out of the heat and have a good time. So, till next time, with more movies from Craig, thank you for coming on the show. Okay.
Punch TV is made possible by amazing stories, providing Saskatoon with comics, games, toys, graphic novels, t-shirts, and more for over 22 years. Online at AmazingStories.com, in person on 8th Street in Saskatoon. That concludes our very first episode of Punch TV. Thank you for watching, and thank you to our guests, Tony Antonek with his fantastic Star Wars collection. Really looking forward to seeing more of that over the next few weeks. To Craig Siliphant for being a fantastic host at the Punch launch party. And of course, to Hank for some awesome reviews. And we encourage you to give us your reviews. So you know where to send them in and one of you might be a lucky winner. Punch Magazine is available at McNally Robinson and Amazing Stories. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you all next time. I got the goat thingy. The goat thingy? You mean the tauntaun? <laughs> the goat thing. The goat thing. <laughs> <laughs>